but then he allowed him to be able to articulate what he saw. You know, there are some people who see things but cannot tell you what it was or what it is. You can't put it into words because some things that God allows you to see even in the spirit realm, Come on. you can't describe it because earth has, uh, has nothing that you can compare to what you see in the spirit realm. Come on here. Come on here. <laughs> You know, you know, when we, uh, 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 of course, if you see something that's used for seeing uh, in the spirit realm, you know that we have something that can compare to seeing a chair or a bench or a stone or something. We can say, oh, they use that to, to sit on. But when God shows you things that have not been revealed to the human eye, and then you're able to articulate, put it to pen, and share it with the likes of you and I, and then you and I are able to take what John saw and formulate our own uh, uh, interpretation of it, and then break it down and translate it and allow, uh, allow God to uh, 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 to talk to our spirit man where we'll be able to convey uh, to the parishioners or to someone who does not know anything about God uh, the word that has been written or spoken over our life is something how the spirit knows uh, in his intelligency uh, how to do things right. my brothers and sisters there are there are and there is uh, seven churches that were uh, uh, spoke about. Uh, not only did Paul write about uh, seven churches, John wrote about seven churches. And the churches that Paul wrote about are different than the churches that John wrote about. Amen. Amen. Paul actually, just to help you, Paul actually, the seven churches that Paul wrote about, or wrote two, uh, uh, he was the founder. All right. Amen. Amen. Now, the seven churches that Paul talked about, I mean, uh, John talked about, uh, were the established churches that were placed here uh, through the Holy Spirit, under the Holy Spirit, under the unctioning of the founding apostle. All right. Amen. 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 And, and do, do you not know that John was uh, one of the disciples, one of the founders of, uh, of the establishment of the church? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And Sardis was one of the churches. Come on. And in Revelation, a lot of things were spoken and shown to John concerning the Lord churches. And to Sardis, that was an admonishment that was given out to the church. And can I just go out on the limb and say that Sardis could be a uh, because there's only one. There's only one. I told y'all there's one body, but there's there's many members. Yeah. There are a lot of Sardis churches. Amen. Amen. That's in operation today. Right. Because the scripture says, and let's go back to it now. I don't know if y'all close your Bibles. He says that to the angel of the church in Sardis write, these are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Mm -hmm. 
and note down, I don't know in your Bible, and, uh, who's speaking. John is the is known as the, the author of the Revelation, but it is Jesus who's doing the speaking. Amen. Amen. He said that these are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. He said, I know your deeds. That's the first thing that you need to know as for any church that's operating or anybody that's operating, God knows what we're doing. He knows our dealing. He knows the establishment of any ministry from the get-go. He knows what the motives are for you wanting to be a church. Come on, come on. Amen. Amen. And I believe that that's the reason why some churches don't get off the ground. Amen. I believe that that's why some of them don't get past paying they. $16 at the tax office to get a name or call a DBA to get an assumed Amen. name. Amen. Because some people want to be a church or be under the auspices of a church because they want what the prestige that yeah. comes with yeah. it. Yeah. They want to uh, run gimmicks and scams to try to get money out of people. Oh, we can give them a 35, 45, 45 minute sermon, an hour sermon, and shout them, and then we can just pass the offering plate and we can get rich. Amen. Amen. I believe that's the reason why the Lord don't allow some people ministry to get off the ground. Come on, come on. Some, some of it also is, is because of the headship of it. The come leadership on, of it. No, uh, uh, just because you call yourself prophet so and so, come on. apostle so and so, bishop so and so, pastor so and so, reverend, whoever or uh, however the title is, just because you call yourself that and probably paid somebody to put your name on a piece of paper to say that that's what you are, yeah. that that doesn't mean that you have a right relationship with God. As a matter of fact, you might not even have gotten a call from God. Come on, because you do know folks is going online now and they getting all the credentials they want. Come on, man. The, you, yesterday you just started preaching last week and all of a sudden you taking online classes and, and you're going to have a master and a bachelor, amen, and a, and a doctorate by the end of the month. Uh, amen. And, and all that equates to is how much money you willing to pay for a piece of paper to hang on the wall to give you your credentials. And, and all of a sudden, now you just printed up you some flyers and you got you some cars out telling folk that you're available to do weddings, funerals, and garage sales, and, 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 and the baptismals, and Bob Mistles, and Keats, and yet. Because you heard that ministry can be lucrative. Come on, here. Yeah. And Jesus, God is tired of the corrupt things that have entered into the church. He says, I know your deeds. I know what you've been doing. And you have a reputation of being alive. But you are dead, he says. Uh, it's not good enough, higher dimensions, it's not good enough for us to, 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 to be having worship on Sunday, two worship services on Sunday, and we come together for manpower on Wednesday, we come together for Bible study on Thursday, and then service on Friday night, and then we feed the community, we clothe the community, it's not good enough to have all of this stuff going on yeah. to make it appear that we are viable and yeah. that we are alive and doing business. Yeah. But what cost of it is of us is that we just doing business and we yet don't have a relationship yeah. with God for us. But you got to understand, it's more to it than 
question for us to just say that we are so and so church. Amen. Come on, come on. God ain't God is not calling for us. Uh, he ain't even calling for the building because it's not even in the building. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's why I tell you that that it's more to it than being here on this corner. We got to get past this corner. And get down the street and around the corner and turn a few more corners because All it's right. some men and some women over there that need to hear from us. Right. So that they will know that somebody from the real church of God cares. That's right. Folk, they laugh, they talk about the Jehovah's Witnesses, but at least the, the Jehovah's Witnesses, they own their job. Yeah. At least they are out there knocking on doors. That's right. Amen. Amen. And I know what you're going to say to me now, especially those on Facebook. I know, well, Bishop, you know we're in a pandemic and, and everything is virtual. Now, God ain't concerned about that. He know the pandemic is here. That's right. As a matter of fact, he allowed it to be so That's right. through his permissive will. That's Amen. But while you trying to save your life, sitting behind your desk, reading your Bible, and call yourself preaching, you still somebody up under the bridge that need a real word that ain't got internet service. And that ain't on Facebook. Don't know what Instagram is. And thought tweeting was a Tweety Bird from the. While we sitting in the comfortability of our of our homes and yeah, yeah. our offices and our studios and what we done made to look like something, and we sitting there dissecting the text, somebody still need a, a, a real man or woman of God to come and see them up under the bridge. That's right. That's right. Come and see oh, them in ten right. yeah. Come see them up under the you know under the underpasses here. Amen. While we so Thank you, Moses. Amen. 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 And, and we, we acting like we're feeling the Holy Ghost in our house. And I'm not saying you ain't feeling the presence of the Lord as you teaching and preaching. I'm simply saying is it's more to it than that. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 Well, somebody ain't got internet access. Yes, Some people ain't with the virtual stuff. Amen. Amen. the church at large. Right. The church is asleep. Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's some people, it's some church, it's some, and I say it's one body, many members. I don't care what the denomination is. I don't care what, what where your church is at. I don't care nothing about who your pastor is, but it ought to be the consensus of if one uh, of, uh, part of the body is doing something, we all ought to join in to help. Y'all ain't helping me now. Right. Huh? This is why I have been so successful in the city of Houston. It's because even if we ain't got it going on over here, and my, my pastor friends down the street got them going on, we go over there and help them right. to do ministry. Amen. Yes, we do. Amen. And I'm not talking about no, and I'm not talking about no church service. I'm talking about what we out there walking the streets with them. Amen, amen. Because it's about ministry. Ministry. Come on, come on, Bishop. So he was saying, stand for the church, wake up. And he says, he gives some instructions. After he says, wake up. See, it's not good enough. Wake up. To wake up means that I have been brought out of a state of sleeping. And some of us have been made aware 
Uh, you know when you when you when you uh when everybody that goes to sleep, you go through a process when you sleep that you you are typically you're unaware of what's going on in your surroundings right. while you sleep. Right. And then when about whatever that wakes you up, it some of us it takes us a moment to get ourselves together. You had to get your wits, as they say, get your wits about you, get your bearings about you before you can realize what's going on. Right. Amen. When you wake up in the morning, can't nobody just jump straight up, jump in their clothes, be in their right mind, and jump in their car, and get on down the freeway. You got to take a few moments to gather yourself. And, and Jesus said, he said, not after he said, wake up, then he says, he gives some instruction. He said, strengthen what remains and is about to die. Jesus sees the fact that 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 they are not only are they asleep, but they are dead in some areas that they need to revitalize themselves. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Notice he didn't say, I, "I'm going, I'm going to strengthen you, and I'm going to wake you up. You need to wake yourself up. You the one who put yourself to sleep. All right. All right. Strengthen yourself." How can we strengthen ourselves as a church? Well, I'm glad you asked me. Uh, because, see, when we get back to God and get back into our word and you spend time with him, God then will start re-instructing us in the word on how we ought to do what he says through the word. Amen. Because we don't spend enough time with God to get from God what we need so that we can receive our blessing. But at the time that we receive it, it may not look like a blessing. But because we're doing what God tells us to do, it manifests itself into a blessing. All right, all right, all right, all right. So when God gives you something, at the time it may not seem like a blessing. Especially when he's telling you to go tell somebody that may not, you you already know it's going to make them angry. Yeah. 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 Amen. But if you can bring a brother in after you done corrected him, the scripture says, you warn yourself a friend. You warn yourself a brother. All right. All right. Amen. All right. Amen. I thank God that somebody thought enough for me to tell me when I was wrong. Come on, come on. Right. Huh? I really thank God, and if I get wrong now, I thank God that he loved me enough to send somebody my way. Amen. Some of us don't want any type of correction. Uh -huh. We don't want nobody to come and tell us nothing. Yeah. We don't want nobody to touch us. We don't want nobody to say nothing to us. Well, how did you get that so awful in your spirit All right. All right. All right. that you don't want nobody to say nothing to you? You don't want nobody to tell you nothing. You don't want nobody to correct you. Amen. Amen. Well, here's the brother scripture. Before you complete your job, you need to strengthen yourself. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you need to resurrect what's, what's about resuscitate. Right. Amen. You need to give a spiritual resuscitation to what's about to yeah. die in your in your ministry. All right, all right. In your life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's what it says. You just wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your deeds complete in the sight of God. And he said, you ain't done yet. You got the finished product. Everything that's been assigned to you has not been fulfilled. And as a church, we all have our specific assignments. But we have collective, together, we have an assignment. Amen. Well, God has given out an, a spiritual agenda to his church. All right. Some of y'all looking, y'all talking, and y'all ain't listening. You're going to miss your assignment because you're too busy trying to talk to somebody else. All right. All right. You, see, that's why That's why some of you ain't going to never make it to be nothing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because God giving out specific instructions right now to bless you. All right. All right. And we're letting the enemy distract us. Keep stuff that we, that we need. That's right. Amen. 
God will never, never, never leave you, put you in leadership. Because you ain't you had to learn how to be a good follower. All right, come on. Wake up, he said. Strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your deed complete in the sight of my God. And he says, remember, therefore, what you have received. Some of us forget what we've already gotten from God. Mm, mm. Some of us forget what we already possess. Come on. Uh-oh. God had already gave it. Come on. He had already blessed you with it. Jesus. And you counted it as nothing. Ah, my, 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 my. But see, when you don't know the worth of the word, ah, Jesus. Amen. amen. You will count it all as nothing. Amen. 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 God's word, this is what the scripture says, his word is alive. Right. Jesus, God is the word. John said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Y'all ain't helping me here now. And, and, and everything that was, that, was, that was made was made by Him. And without Him was nothing made. There is some worth in the Word. And the Word, if you apply it correctly, it'll work for you. Y'all ain't helping me up in here now. And, 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 and somebody says, he says, remember therefore what you have already received. And, and what you have received is his promises, his word. That's right. What he said he would do. Yeah. And, the, and, and a lot of the church, uh, the churches are missing it because we're trying to, uh, I said it a couple of summers ago, we st we're trying to be trendy. All right, all right, yeah. We're trying to do what everybody else is doing. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. A amen, amen. And, 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 and that's why I don't care how great or, uh, or how big the edifice get and how big. I ask God, I say, God, keep me on a level where I want to be right there. My people can still be, I'm going to be touchable and reachable come on, come to my right. people. Right, to the right. people that you place me in a servant over. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I, I don't want to be like the, the preachers where that they got 15 guards around them all and right. you can't touch them. They, they got to touch Jesus. Church, we must obey 
And then he says, lastly, he says, and repent. What's going to revitalize the church is the church got to own up to its responsibility that a lot of the stuff that's going on in the world, a lot of the stuff that's going on in the church, and a lot of stuff that's going on around our communities is because the church have given the has given the world a false sense of reality. Because we have the church has compromised in a lot of areas that now the church resembles the world. That's why some folk can't get delivered. They can't get delivered when you was there drinking with them last night at the party. And now you're trying to minister to them. You're trying to preach to them today. And you're the pastor of the church. You can't go to the, you was, last night you was, you was at the whole stroll with all the rest of the hoes. And now you up here trying to give them a rainbow word. And you were just. And some of them, God forbid, some of them were drinking and smoking, amen, and now you up here trying to uh, 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 prophesy, and you was high with them last night, too. Right. 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 It's happening, and it's happening in the church. Amen. You can, get, you can get high with the preachers. You can fornicate and, ad and, and adulterate with the preachers. With the preachers. Amen. Amen. We can come on in here and we can, we can shout, but don't talk, <laughs> preacher, don't talk about, don't say nothing about this or that because you know. You know. <laughs> and so the pastor got to stay away from, he got to be conscious of, of, of what he say because he don't want to, now you know. <laughs> Huh? Mm -hmm. And we're living now in a time now where everybody is going live, and if they ain't going live, they know how to push the record button right. and just keep it for safekeeping, That's just in right. case. That's right. Black man. Huh? That's why Jesus said, you gotta, "The church got to repent. We got to repent." Amen. We've allowed a lot of things to go on in God's house, and God is saying for the church, before the church dies, that we need to obey and we need to repent. Amen. 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 He says, but if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief. This is the warning right here. And if we don't get it together, he says, I'm coming like a thief. And I'm not going to tell you exactly when I'm coming, but because if, if we all knew when the thief was coming, we, never, we would stay home, wouldn't we? Huh? Especially at the time if we knew that the plan of the thief. we stay home. We'd be there to catch it or to prevent it some kind of way. Amen. But the, but the reality is you don't know when the thief comes. And that's what Jesus is saying. You don't know when I'm coming, and I'm not gonna tell you. But I got I, I got some plan for you, and I'm gonna execute my plan, and I'm not gonna tell you my plan. He says, and you will not know at what time I will come. Here's the confirmation to know that God is not going to destroy the whole church yet. For this reason, let me help you. Verse 4 says, Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. That's it right there. God oh, ain't came back to destroy, to kill the church, to destroy the church because there's a few people who, who there's a remnant that's left that have not went into the ways of sin, have not went into the ways of the world, they're still trying to pray and fast and believe God for the whole entire church. And that's the reason why God hadn't come back and annihilated Sardis is because there's a few people that's still there that say they pray and they fasting for all the rest of the believers. Come on, come on. That's good. Amen. Amen. It's a 
remnant as well. Thank God for the remnant. Amen. Amen. And, and with every church, there's a remnant. Jesus. Amen. That, there's a remnant. You, you can tell who the real church. You can't tell the real church on Sunday morning. I mean, that's, right. that's just a fact. All right. Every pastor has the same plight. The pastors don't know what what he really, who he really pastors, and how many he really pastors, uh, not on a Sunday morning. All right. Amen. Amen. Because the numbers can swell. They can be staggering on Sunday morning. All right. But the real church is determined about how many show up for prayer meeting and teachers right. meeting and Bible study. That, that's, that's the real church right there. They're the one that's trying to learn of the word of God. They're the one that's trying to better themselves and grow stronger in the word of God and the word knowledge of God. Them are the ones who are trying their best to be the best of a Christian that they can be. But the rest of them, you don't know why they showing up on Sunday night. Some showed up because they heard the music ministry is good. All right. Some showed up because they heard that y'all they heard that y'all give out food and clothes. And some showing up because they heard uh, that the preacher is single. Some showed up because they heard that they got a great singles ministry over there. Right. And, and Sister Sally got her husband out of there six years ago, and they still going strong. Right. And you want to join, baby? Some some people stack. That's why they go. They're not going to church for what they can offer the yeah, church. Yeah, yeah. They're going to church for what the church can offer them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. 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 Oh, God is saying that I hadn't destroyed the church because there's a remnant who haven't gotten themselves entangled with the word. There's a few that's still holding on to the word of God. Sound teaching. Amen. Amen. And while others are falling by the wayside because they are visiting various other doctrines. Ah, ah. While they are uh, 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 practicing what the other churches are doing. Amen. Amen. There's still a, a remnant. There's a few who's doing it like the apostles say to do. All right. All right. Amen. Amen. We gotta get back to we gotta get back to knowing how the apostles set up the church, so that we can walk in the ways that the apostles set the church up, so that we can be victorious. All right. Amen. Amen. Because all of this other stuff that's coming along. Amen. That ain't mean in the church no good. Amen. And I know technology has its place. And I know that that we 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 coming that that, that in, a, in probably in a few years or maybe within the next year, uh, uh, most of these churches won't go back to being church no more. They everything will be virtual and and all you got to do is sit there and look at them on a little you know on your iPad or whatever. Yeah. And uh, uh, through the lenses on your computer or on your phone, and and, and, and that's all it'll be. And, and you don't feel the presence of the Holy Ghost, but after it's all said and done, they're going to be asking you to give. All right. All right. All right. You haven't got no deliverance, amen, because uh, 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 they need to be delivered. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And, 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 and most folk don't understand that the scripture says to forsake not the assembling of yourselves one with another. There's power when we come together. There is strength when we come together. There's a mighty move of God when we come together. It's, it's not just a clashing of spirits. It's a meshing that goes on too. Y'all ain't helping me up in here. It's something about when you when you tap into the other energies uh, that's in the room that's like your energy. <laughs> And then all of y'all's energies collectively uh, taps into the energy that is coming through uh, through heaven's way. It's something about when stuff begins to stir together and begin to move in the spirit realm. But that's when people, I told y'all, people can get delivered and they didn't even mean to get delivered today. I, I would just coin 
to see because the last time I went, I seen a guy that was in church. He had wavy hair and nice muscles and he had a lot of tattoos. And I wanted to see if he was coming back to church this Sunday. And you came looking for him, that man. But that man didn't show up. But that was another man that showed up. Y'all ain't helping me here. And you got saved and delivered. Yes, and you wasn't planning on getting delivered because of the atmosphere, the atmospheric pressure that came into the room. Am I, am I preaching in this place? Oh, I feel the anointing of God in this room. My brothers and my sisters, I see, I can see, I feel, and I can see of the presence of the Holy Ghost. Jesus, Jesus now, he says to the church, he says that we must, uh, we must understand that there's a few people, uh, there's a remnant in Sardis uh, that have not gotten themselves dirty. Uh, they're walking around undefiled. Uh, oh, bless the name of the Lord. Uh, they haven't gotten themselves entangled uh, uh, with the world and uh, the worldly affairs. Uh, and they still come out for prayer meeting. They, and they still labor in the word of God. Yeah. They still fall prostrate before the master. Yes, they still come down to the altar. There's still some that steal. Yes, they tarry until something happens. And they labor before God until breakthroughs coming. And God is saying that's why I haven't come. Because the few righteous, the few that are remaining is holding all the rest of you clowns together. Why you I feel clowning and shaking and shaking. Oh. My God from Zion. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Jesus is saying in this hour that he says to the remnant, he says that I'm not coming back because of the remnant. And because of the remnant, they shall be able to to walk with me with white robes. They shall be able to walk about heaven with me. And their names shall be in the Lamb's book of, book of life. Oh, I fear the presence of the Holy Ghost in this place. What great things the Lord has in store for them that love him. Ain't the Lord alright? I got a real good feeling. It's going to be alright. Yes. Yes. Jesus said will walk with me dressed in white for they are worthy thank me unto God for the remnant thank God for those that are last for I heard in the scripture says that the, the, those that are last they shall be first. And those that are first, they shall be last. And I'm so glad that you are not calling the word. But because I am a remnant, and because you are the remnant, Jesus said that we are worthy to walk in white. Ain't the Lord our White, white represents purity. Ain't God all right? What God is saying when we're walking in white, that we're walking in purity. 
Jesus. They gladly receive it because it is from the Lord. And sometimes the word don't make us feel good at the present moment. But we're thankful that God thought enough of us to send us a word of correction, send a word of admonishment.
Or either way, it took you some time to get all that together. And you're going to come and sit here and don't receive nothing? God is saying, I'm holding on to you because of the remnant that's still left into the atmosphere. Because somebody is still praying. Somebody is still walking in the ways of him. You ought to thank God that somebody praying and got themselves right before God that God ain't came back to get us all. Amen. Because when he got ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he sent, he sent the angels in before he decided to destroy. They were, they were fashioned like men. But they were angels nevertheless. When they sent, he sent them over to Lot's house to scout out the land to find out if there was anybody there anybody worth it. He could find eight men. And he said, I won't destroy them. And the, the sin sickness of, the, of Sodom and Gomorrah was so thick until while the men, the angels of the Lord was in Lot's house, those men in the town came and knocked on Lot's door and knocked on it and said, where the men that went in? We saw them go in your house. Bring them out here. We want to have sex with them. And that was enough for the Lord. That was enough for the Lord. Tell Lot, tell Lot, Lot, get your family, get your, get your wife, y'all get out. I only got one stipulation. I don't care what you hear. He said, don't look back. Get out of here and run fast as you can. And Lot heard the word. His wife must have thought it was a game. Amen. Some theologians have theorized she heard her children because their children didn't even go. She heard her children's cries. And she looked back. Well, I don't know if her children cried, but she heard something that got her attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when she turned back, just as the word of God says, she turned into a pillar of salt. And I don't know about you, but I don't want no rocks to cry out uh, in my place. And I've come too far.
community that need to see your face. There's still people out here in the community that need to rub elbows with you. There's still people in the community that need to know that the church is not closed and the pastors are not scared. Because some of them are just fearful. And God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound. Control Corona by sitting at the house. If God wants you to have it, you can never. You can seal all the windows, all the doors, uh, call every crack. And if the Lord wants you, wants you to have it, you gonna get it. But He's protecting you, and you don't even have all of that. Because you are divinely protected, you can take all the windows. All the doors out. And he's going to protect you. I know this. This is a different theology. Because you got your own perspective. Because, see, I don't know how you think that a piece of cloth.
Bishop Ricky Ross, Senior Pastor, Sunday service, 8 a.m. and 11 a.m.